Hey everyone, Sam McKay from Enterprise DNA. Just going to go over the rank X function here and, and why, and some of the, the considerations, the important things that you have to think about when you're actually utilizing rank X as a standalone function. Now, to actually get rank X going, you need to, you really need to understand context. You need to understand. Uh, or at least think in your mind, what is the current context? You need to think that over and over and over again. Now, for example, what we're trying to do, if you looked in this, in, to the left, this left-hand side table, we are trying to work out, based on, we're trying to get a number, we're trying to get a number of uh, the rank based on sales or based on any metric. It could be anything. In this case, I'm just using something very generic, I'm using sales. But we want to actually evaluate it via the product name, right? So I want to get the ranking of this particular product based on based on the sales of across all the different products that we sell, right? So let's have a look at the formula for this. So where context is so important is mainly because of this this part here, right? We need to put a table inside of rank X to evaluate over based on the measure that we specify. So we need to, in the current context here, which is product 63, we need to basically remove any filter from the products table. That is exactly what all does because we need to evaluate over every single product and see, okay, well, where does the total sales for this particular product rank based on all of those products? So that's why we need to use all. Now to reiterate to this point, check out what happens if I actually just put products in here. Check out the result. It just evaluates to one. And you know why? Because every single uh, calculation for every single row here it is only looking at the current product in the current context. So everything is always going to be ranked first because this is literally the only product in the table um, that is uh, the, the rank X is evaluating over. So that's why we need to put all products or you could actually be um, put product name in here. Totally depends on how you want to use it, but all this is going to return exactly the same result as before. Now where that is important is because depending on what context you place in, maybe you might have a lookup table which is very long and has a number of different dimensions and you might need to or you may want to be more specific around the column that you're actually referencing. In this case I'm only going to reference the products table because it's a very simple table and I'm going to then get my product ranking uh, via that method. Okay so that is I guess the key learning just to simp uh, you know, for simple rank X calculations. But what happens if it gets more complex? Okay, and that's where again context is absolutely key. You need to understand, okay, well, what is the current context of this calculation? Now I'm going to bring in this exact same formula into this table, okay, and let's have a look at the result. You'll see here that we are, we are actually getting again pretty erroneous results. The reason being though is because we also have a customer name context here, right? And so if we look at the formula, you'll see here that it is not breaking out each individual customer. It is only, we are only evaluating each uh, through the products for each, each specific customer. So you see here that this will change if I actually then go and sort by, uh, if I go and sort by say the customer name here, you'll see that the rankings are now starting to change because we're starting to see, okay, well, based on each different customer, what, uh, uh, what ranking is each product that they particularly buy. And you see here there's lots of um, the numbers that are the same and that's because we get to say number uh, rank 17 and, and maybe this customer's only bought 17 products so it just extrapolates 17 out. So that, that may be what you need, right? That may be what you need in this case. But what if, for example, what if, for example, and I'll just get this um, arranged, what if, for example, you actually need the rank from one to whatever of your customer name and product? right and so this is where it gets a little bit more complex in understanding the context again and how we manipulate the context to get the result we want is so important now we've got two dimensions here which are from two totally different tables we've got a customer customer name is coming from this table and product name is coming from this table right and so basically what we need to do is we need to somehow remove filters or filters on this and on this virtual table inside of rank x from both of these both of these tables right so we need to um, do what we did here but we need to do it across both of these uh, particular columns in these particular tables and so that we then as per this number here which is the result we get the correct ranking via total sales of customer name and product 
And so here is the formula that you can use for that. Now, I've used a cross join, right? So what cross join allows us to do is it basically allows us to um, jam two columns together, or it could be uh, two tables, but in this case, I've just gone with, with uh, columns. Actually, it might actually be columns. You just jam two columns together, but you can, there are ways to uh, configure it where you actually do more. Um, but um, you can do a cross join on a cross join, which I have done, um, I have done a couple of times before. But what you can do here, so you, if you check out what this formula is showing, it's saying, well, I actually want to remove all the context from customer and all of the context from product name. And so basically another way to think of that is removing the filters from any of those two tables. And I want to evaluate at each individual row. I want to iterate through every single row in this virtual table and evaluate, well, where is that particular rank uh, for this particular customer name and product name subset. And so you'll see here that we go one, two, three, four, five, which is right, but then we, we do actually have the same, say we've got a fourth equal right because this is exactly the same sales um, and so on and so forth. But that is achieving the result that we want in this case because of this different context that we have put into the result. So that's the main thing I wanted to cover here. These are just some considerations. <clears throat> Basically the key takeaway here is really understanding the context that your rank X function is being placed into because it will totally determine uh, what the table is or the virtual table that you need to specify is that you need to iterate um, through. And so this could change for a variety of different things. You might want to actually rank by customer individually. You might want to rank by region, uh, salespeople. I mean, there's just so many different ways you could do it. I mean, in so many different functions and business lines, etc. cetera. Um, but uh, the key there is that initial context, we need to somehow remove it. We need to somehow remove it based on um, manipulating the virtual table inside of um, the rank X formula. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. If you like the content, certainly throw the video a like, really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Plenty of Power BI content coming uh, straight out to you. Okay, all the best and talk to you soon.